Software instrument channel strips are driven either by a recorded MIDI region on the track that's assigned to them, like we see here. Here's a region on a track that's assigned to instrument one, so it'll play back on instrument one. Or it's driven by live MIDI input, meaning from a keyboard controller or drum pads or guitar controller, etc. Now, they work similarly to audio channel strips in terms of signal flow, with one exception, which we're going to get to in a moment. But they work the same in that we have input here, and then we can process the sound, route it to other destinations, and ultimately route it to the main output. So I'll play back, and we'll hear the sound triggered on here via this MIDI region triggering it. And not unexpectedly, I can reassign it the same way that I can reassign audio channel strips. So for example, on instrument two here, I have another sound loaded in. I can reassign it to that other channel strip and I'll hear it back now played back through this channel strip in this instrument. So same MIDI region, same notes, just played back through a different instrument. Now the difference though with software instrument tracks is the area above here. On audio tracks, these are basically visual references and displays, notwithstanding the settings menu over here. And on instruments, we have the same thing. We have the gain reduction meter, the EQ meter, and the settings, but we also have MIDI effects. And these actually are the first stage of input. So when we're playing our MIDI keyboard and MIDI information is arriving at the channel strip, the first thing it goes through is MIDI effects, and then it triggers the sound, and then it'll be processed with audio effects, and then it'll be routed to the other alternate destinations, and then to the stereo output. So for example, here's a sound that I have on this track, and I'm going to unmute it. And by the way, let's digress for a moment and talk about mute and solo buttons. Now, mute buttons removes the signal from the signal flow pathway. So this was muted, and we weren't hearing it, even though there's MIDI data on this track that's assigned to this instrument. We're not hearing it because it's removed from the signal pathway, and I'll bring it back in. And alternatively, we can solo by using the S button, and that isolates the signal from all the other signals flowing through Logic's signal pathway. So for example, if I solo instrument one now, we'll hear only this and not the others. But let's get back to instrument three. So here I have some chords played in. That's the region over there. And they're being played back, they're triggering the sound, and they're getting processed with these effects, and then they're getting routed to the output. But I have a MIDI effect here that I can put in, and this is an arpeggiator, which is going to break up the notes into a chordal pattern, and let's listen. So the MIDI data on this track is getting routed to the channel strip, it's getting processed here and broken up into those additional MIDI messages that the arpeggiator generates, the additional MIDI note messages, and then that's triggering the ES2. Then the sound from the ES2 is getting processed by these plugins, and then it's being routed to the output here. Now, another difference with software instrument channel strips is that they can play back multiple tracks assigned to the same channel strip at the same time. Now, let me mute this arpeggio pattern again. I'm going to hide this for a moment. And here we have this bass part. Now, let's say I take this next track and I reassign it to the same instrument and I'm going to put that to instrument one. So now we have two tracks routed to the same instrument. Liverpool Bass is the name of the patch loaded in on the EXS24 and that's due to the automatic naming in our project settings. And I'm going to option drag this to copy it down and I'll offset it by a couple of division increments so that we can hear the two playing together. Let's try that and we should hear both of them. And we can have some fun, of course, in the instrument parameters and get some nice patterns happening. Lots of fun to play with that kind of stuff, but I digress. So instrument tracks, again, the difference being that we can play multiple tracks back at the same time assigned to the same channel strip, whereas audio, we can only play one track back assigned to the same channel strip and the topmost one will be the one that's sounding or the one that's starting the later in the timeline if you have overlapping ones in terms of the horizontal positioning. And getting back to our arpeggiated track, let's just solo this one this time so we'll hear only this signal. And with this selected in the track, it works the same with live input. If I play notes on my keyboard, I'm going to mute the arpeggiator. 
I'm hearing the MIDI input triggering the sound and then being processed with that. But if I turn this on, the MIDI input will go through this first and then will trigger these sounds based on the additional notes generated from here. So it works the same way via live input or playing back a region on the track. So that's a little overview of software instrument tracks and channel strips, and I'll see you for more in the next video.